Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on how to maximize the use of FileCloud Sync and FileCloud Drive apps. In today's webinar, we will cover the key features of both the FileCloud Sync and the FileCloud Drive apps. We will also discuss the major differences and what's recommended for your business needs. We'll start off with the FileCloud Drive app. FileCloud Drive allows you to access the FileCloud server and the files stored in the server from a mounted drive on your local Windows machine. Notice in the screenshot above that you can see a mounted drive on my computer. And on the bottom screenshot, you can see this, uh, the folders within the mounted drive. FileCloud Drive also allows you to easily access the web user portal from the drive or from the FileCloud Drive interface. Notice that the highlighted option can be accessed when clicking on the test user or the, uh, the username drop-down list, and it should give you the option to open website. Files from the cloud or files from the FileCloud Drive can also be accessed from the Microsoft or using a Microsoft Office application. You can open, for example, Microsoft Word, click on open, and when you browse, it allows you to navigate through the FileCloud Drive directory. And lastly, if you have DocIQ enabled for FileCloud Drive, this allows the user to conveniently, uh, conveniently restrict the edit and download option um, to the file that the user is currently working on. We'll do a demo on this one shortly. Next, let's proceed to FileCloud Sync app. A key feature in the FileCloud Sync app is allowing the user to access FileCloud and have the ability to sync the files from the server into a directory in the local machine. We call this the sync folder. What you can see on the screenshot is me logging in uh, from the web user portal. And on the screenshot on the bottom would be me accessing the sync directory or the sync folder. Notice the same set of folders is showing up on both the interfaces. Now, FileCloud Sync also allows you to schedule the sync action or even set a download and upload rate limits. This will come in handy if you're running FileCloud in a slow network. And if you want to specify different rate limits on different days. The screenshot here shows that you can, um, an option that you can access when you go to the sync interface, go into settings, and this should allow you to modify the global rate limits, scheduled rate limits, set a day on when the rate limits will take effect, and even set a time on when the, when the rate limits will take effect. You can also set when the sync will run or the sync action will run on a specified date or day of the week and also on a specified time as needed. When FileCloud Sync is running on the user's local machine, the user will be able to use the edit in desktop feature from the web user interface. This allows the user to directly edit an, uh, an Office document using a Microsoft Office application without having uh, an, an, office, an Office 365 account. They can just use their locally installed instance of Microsoft Office to be able to edit the file. I will show a demo of this one shortly. And lastly, FileCloud Sync allows the user to back up a local folder into FileCloud. This feature requires to be enabled though from the admin portal by an admin user. I will show a demo on this one now. However, let's start with doing a demo on the FileCloud Drive application. I'm going to log in. I'm going to open the FileCloud Drive app, which I've um, already logged in. This is the, how the interface would look like. From here, you can click an open folder which allows you to access the drive folder. And from the top uh, portion 
of the file cloud drive interface, you can click on the drop down under username and click on open website, which basically opens up the web user portal. The same set of folders can be seen from the file cloud drive folder on the local machine. Now let's try and open Microsoft Office. Um, in this case, Microsoft Word. From the Microsoft Word interface, you can click on open, click on browse, and this allows you to browse through the file cloud drive directories and open a file if needed. When you open a file, notice that on the right hand side, the doc IQ panel is enabled. This allows you to lock and unlock a document if you're working on it. You could also prevent download while you're working on the document. You can also create the share directly from the doc IQ panel. You can see versions of the file and you can add a comment into the file from the doc IQ panel. The same features can be done if you're working on the file from the web user portal. Now let's go ahead and proceed with the File Cloud Sync app. I already have File Cloud Sync running in the background, and this is how the user interface would look like. I have mine set to sync, or I have the sync on my File Cloud Sync turned off. However, we can enable that. Sorry. Um, I have set a configuration here for active hours. So I'm going to disable it. Now I can turn on sync. I can go into settings, which gives me this window. From this window, you can access the upload and download rate limits. You can change the settings. By default, it's set to unlimited. So whatever bandwidth is available, File Cloud Sync will be using the bandwidth. From here, I can set a scheduled rate limit. I can put in, right now I've placed in 150 KB per second. I can set a day, a specific day. Right now I'm going to set every day and I've specified an hour as to when the rate limits will take effect. I'm gonna cancel this one for now. Click on save. Now I also have here active sync hours. When you enable, enable active sync hours, you can specify which day of the week the sync will start to run. You can even specify the hours on when it needs to run. You can set this uh, maybe outside of the business hours where nobody, uh, where the bandwidth usage is low. You can save that one. For now, I will click on cancel. Click on close. So when you have the file cloud, oh, before I proceed, let me go into settings and where you can access backups. From here, you can pick a directory on your local machine, which gives me all the drives that are available on my computer. I can set which folder needs to be saved into the file cloud server. In this case, I will select photos and the folder under it called Clover. I can set a schedule as to when the sync or the frequency of the sync. I can also send an email to me when the backup has been completed. For now, I can click on close. I'll remove the backup. Click close. And from the user interface, I can show you how you can access the edit in desktop option. For example, I do not have a, an Office 365 account. However, I do have a locally installed Office um, application. I have here a document. I can click on the more options from the web user interface. And I have the option that says edit in desktop. What this does is that it opens the document using my locally installed Microsoft Office application and still have the same options as what I have earlier. I have the doc IQ enabled for File Cloud Sync. I can lock and I can also prevent download. I can manage the shares, which gives me the same set of options as what I would get when I'm accessing this, the share from the user portal. 
I can also add a comment and view the version of the document. Now, what are the differences between the two applications? For FileCloud Drive, this requires real-time access to the FileCloud server, while FileCloud Sync, on the other hand, requires access to the FileCloud server only when it's syncing. Therefore, if you're connected to the file, if you're not connected to the Office network or you don't have access, real-time access to the FileCloud server, you will not be able to access the files through the FileCloud Drive. However, with FileCloud Sync, as long as the sync has been completed, you can the user can disconnect from the office network or the internet and still be able to access the files from the sync folder. With FileCloud Sync, this handles um, uploads of larger files into the FileCloud server better compared to FileCloud Drive, as the upload and the download rate limits can be set. FileCloud Drive also does not consume as much storage in the local machine compared to FileCloud Sync, as it does not permanently save the file in the local computer. FileCloud Drive saves a copy of the, the working file in the cache, while FileCloud Sync saves a copy of the files in the sync folder. The user also, the I'm sorry, the FileCloud Drive cache can only be cleared out once the user logs out of the FileCloud interface or the FileCloud Drive interface. However, the user has the option to clear the cache while he or she is logged in by going to settings and the button that says clear cache. Now, what are our, what are our recommendations? So we, rec we recommend using FileCloud Drive for users that has real-time access to the FileCloud server, users that are also used that are used to use or to accessing files using the Windows Explorer interface. We could also recommend FileCloud Drive for collaboration and for users with limited resources on their local machine, as the files from the server are not saved in the local machine. FileCloud Sync, though, is recommended for users in the field, users that regularly disconnect from the office network but still need to access the files in FileCloud. Users that are allowed to have a copy of the files in the FileCloud server and can be saved on the local machine. Um, lastly, anybody has any questions? If none, always remember that you can always visit help at help.coldate.com to open a support ticket. You can also visit our documentations at getfilecloud.com forward slash support docs. Our tutorial videos, same to this one, will be uploaded in getfilecloud.com slash filecloud-tutorial-videos. Again, I would like to thank everyone for joining and everyone have a wonderful day.